Well, there's a rare sight. The Croton actually isn't thirsty for like the first time in probably three weeks when I've been out here filming. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's it been doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. Out here in the gross, have just a couple thirsty plants. I missed a couple when I watered last week. It just, it'll be okay. Don't worry. It's a pothos. It'll rehydrate. Not the end of the world. Holidays are sort of coming to an end. I suppose New Year's, it's going to be New Year's Eve when this comes out, isn't it? The last minute video, as the last several have been, because you know, life has just been chaos lately. Good chaos, but still chaotic. Wanted to make sure I get a video out for Saturday, just because I don't like missing the Saturday videos. Already missed Wednesday because of the holidays and having family in town. I figured we can pop outside in a little bit and have a look at the cold damage from the blizzard, from that negative six degree cold front we had moved through here maybe poke around in here somewhat. I'm refilling the pond right now. Drain this almost all the way down watering last night. There, well, there aren't really a ton of updates to give though. Cause like I said, I've had the family in town. So I haven't been out here much at all really since the last time I filmed out here. Not that I can really think of other than to give some quick waterings to the plants, but that's been about it. I haven't had time to play with things, unfortunately hasn't been oh the, well, this is new maybe we should talk about that also this gonna have to talk about that too uh fish tank it's a 65 gallon tank that's meant to go in the office that i've been remodeling upstairs this tank has been out here for a couple of years and i used to use it to let the iguana like have little soaks and playtime and basically when it wanted to swim around but the iguana is too big for that now that's not going to cut it for swimmy time. Now it's just going to have to enjoy the larger pool over here and I'm just gonna be really fast catching it so it doesn't escape when it's done doing it. So iguanas like to swim. And that's not the point here. I was doing a water test on it last night. I filled it up with water, marked the glass, make sure it didn't leak because you know iguanas, their claws are like razor blades and I figured there could be some damage to silicone seal in there. But so far, so good. I'm draining it down when taking the water and pumping it back over into the pond and once that's drained, it'll be out of the way and can can resume normal activities over here. So that is a bit of a blockade, but it doesn't really matter because I don't really have anything that I think I should be doing over here right now anyways, other than watering because the plants did get pretty thirsty and that's why they had a big water last night. I did. There may have been one casualty from the cold. That's an oleander. I don't know. That's a pretty resilient one. I've had it for a long time. The variety's called Maui Sunrise or Maui Sunset. I can't remember. It's an, I don't want to say rare oleander, but I've never seen it for sale and it's really hard to find pictures of online. Probably not going to be able to replace it. So if that doesn't bounce back, I don't know. I'm going to be bummed. With the oleanders, oftentimes you give them a cut back, then they will be okay. The other thing that, which can be, look at what happened. I don't actually know how this happened. I came out here one day a few days ago and it was just laying on the ground with a great big hole in the leaf. Went ahead and repotted it into a larger, heavier container. I have no idea what would have knocked this over. I don't think it would have taken much because it was already top heavy. Big floppy leaves, they are a top heavy plant. So uh, perhaps the pot just wasn't weighted down enough. I don't know, that's the only thing I can think of. Or maybe there was a mouse or something in here. I have traps and things set up, but still they could be out here or a bird may have gotten in and knocked it down one day. I'm not really sure, but eh, not thrilled about it. You know, these don't grow very fast, so that's that's not good, but not the end of the world. Plants still growing. Not particularly happy after being knocked down and then repotted again. And, you know, it was just shipped up here. I expected a decent, a very quick transition. Maybe I should tone it down a little bit. I expected some dieback with this plant, just regardless, because of the nature of the plant having been shipped all over the place from Ecuador up to Florida and then up to here, the cold temperatures and then being repotted and then temperatures in here shifting around with the negative six degrees outside. I think that it's the coldest temperature that it got in here was like 70 or 72. That's with the heater up here running full blast. So that did dry the air out, got down to about 39% humidity, which isn't great. But that was only for about a day consistency is important, but this all started before any of that was going on. I expected some dieback. Not shocked by that at all. This is just very, very, very unfortunate. But when I did repot this, I bumped into a larger, much heavier container. 
it, the roots look really healthy. There's lots of new growth coming out of them, so the plant itself seems okay now, just not looking too hot. There's a lot of activity going on with the roots. That's what I care about the most. I did uh, change up the blend that I was using for it. Here's the remnants of that. I had some soaking. I need to get this blended up and soaked some more because I have a couple other aeroids that I want to repot. It's a standard aeroid mix. Earthworm castings, perlite, there's some sand in here, orchid bark. There's a good amount of orchid bark. It's just blending in and wet right now. And uh, I've added sphagum. A lot of you suggested to me to not use the sphagum with the uh, queen over here, the Huelquianum, because of their propensity to rot. And I respected and I appreciated that tip. However, I've had a heck of a time keeping that thing hydrated. So when I repotted it, I did add some sphagum back into it. It's not a ton. This may look like a lot, but it really isn't. Need to make sure to break up these big chunks like this. Don't need those big chunks in there. It's not a lot, it's just a little. Hopefully this blend will keep it happy, a little bit of a less is more situation. It doesn't look that chunky through the camera. This is, it is very chunky. It does not hold together. It falls right apart. It's just wet, so it looks like there's not a ton of orchid bark in there. The chips that I use are the medium sized, sometimes I'll use the small size chips from Orchiata. It's just a hard bark chip. That's been working fairly well with the other aeroids that I've done this blend with, so hopefully that should be the same. I also have a few larger chunks in there just to make sure that there's some air gaps and things don't get compacted. One, make sure air can flow around inside the container. So that's what's going on out here. Been watering plants, taking care of things. Actually, I should probably go inside and shut the water off because this is getting pretty full. And now my hands are dirty and I can't touch the camera. So I'm gonna do that. And uh, there's the plant update we can get back to doing some fun work out here next week especially once that tank is out of here the, having the tank in the way that's that's a problem you can poke around outside and go see how the plants are looking how did everything fare with those frigid freaking stupid freezing cold temperatures oh, nope never mind not going anywhere i have to wait for this to finish draining down i don't want to walk away from the pump and let it dry out the aeroid mix i know i keep saying it it doesn't look super chunky it is that's probably close to 50 percent of bark and core between the orchid bark and the coconut core. And this has been the first time that I haven't had to water this almost every single day because I would water it, give it a nice drink and it would be limp. These don't really go limp in the leaves. I've noticed, thank you, heater. It just randomly turned on and wouldn't turn back off. I've noticed with the queen, it's more in here along the stem. The stems get sort of flaccid and the plant droops more. You don't really see it so much in the foliage. But anyways, I was watering this almost every single day. So yeah, the sphagum might be something that will lead to some rot issues, but watering the plant every single day and then having it dry out so quickly, that can also lead to some issues with rot. So I figured get some sphagum in there, make sure it's nice and airy and drains super, super fast, and hopefully it will be fine. Why is my lens, is my lens, what's going on with my lens? Ugh, lens is greasy. This is almost Done. Gotta love a nice sump pump. They come in so handy for draining things down. I'll get that taken apart and pop outside. Hopefully get to see the pets and maybe pop up to the office and I can show y'all where that tank's going to go. That's not, you can't even see it. It's over there. You saw it. Hey, Turbs. Hey, you doing, baby? Hey, how's it going? He's been having a great time. The neighbors up the hill, they have a dog named Dude who he plays with a lot. They also seem to have a friend over, somebody over who has a poodle mix of some kind so it's just been the three of them back and forth and back and forth and back and forth <laughs> he wants to you want to go see your friends you want to go outside and see your friends you watching them you see them up there all right you have to sit good sit get your bell boop your bell or do stretches stretches are nice too but you got to boop your bell boop your bell come on turbo you can do it boop your bell there you go good boy go have fun with your friends go see what they're up to cosmo hello okay not in the mood i get it Hi, pumpkin. Toby, hey Toby. Having a good nap, Tobes? You yeah, good boy. Nothing? You're not gonna jump up? Had the camera sitting here and thought she was gonna do the thing where she jumps up on the counter and looks really cute. She didn't do it. What you doing, pumpkin? Not in the mood? That's fine. Things got kind of windy out here. Blew a few things over. It, that's not even from the storm though, or from the blizzard. The blizzard, we had 40 mile an hour gusts, I think is what they were saying, but that didn't really do any damage well there there's some cold damage didn't blow anything over but then the warm front moved in it's now like 65 degrees outside and absolutely beautiful 
that did some damage. That blew pretty much everything over. So there's the Sable Miners. Not looking too hot. I think they'll be okay. These are going to get hit with a copper-based fungicide here. Might be some spear pulp with this one. You can see if I get down close in there, the spear on that one's pretty dried out. Not looking too hot. The one that's further over in there doesn't look too bad. I'm going to go ahead and say that both of these though, that the, all those leaves are bad. Those are going to lose all those leaves. Needle palm, it's fine, of course, it's a needle palm. And then the sable miners on this side, not, it's, ugh. okay, here's what happened. They were weighed down, seemed okay, blizzard had passed, and then it was ridiculously cold. Like I said, it was negative six degrees outside, below zero, six below zero Fahrenheit. And the what, apparently the wind, knocked this partially off of this edge. I had pots and things to weigh it down. It just happened, nothing I can do about it. I thought that that thing was anchored down solid. I pulled on it, didn't seem like it was going to come up and there was ice and snow on it. But part of it came up, not the whole thing, but enough. You know, when it's six degrees below zero, just a little gap is all it takes. So they're not looking too hot, it looked better, but I do think that they will be okay. You can see the ones over here, closer to the house where it's just naturally, well not naturally, because it's a house, but expectedly, warmer more protected towards the house these are looking much better in here and these actually didn't have as much cloth on them either i made sure that the heaviest layer of cloth was over here on the side that was more exposed these look good though these are fine those over here yeah i mean yeah, is what it is kind of surprised to see this kind of damage though on the sable miners and absolutely nothing on the little gem magnolia little gem magnolia is looking totally fine no burnt leaves nothing it can take a while for cold damage to show but on the magnolia be seeing the brown tips along the edges of the foliage nothing just looking like nothing even happened it's a zone seven plenty of people grow them in zone six uh, generally around here when you grow a little gem magnolia you expect a freeze to come through every 10 or 20 years it's so bad that it will kill off half of the plant if negative six degrees didn't do it i'd say this is a pretty good spot for it but i what i was getting at and didn't get to was that i am surprised that there's no damage on the little gem but the sable miners which are pretty dang cold hardy look like this a lot of claims out there that say sable miner hardy to zone six that no a lot of disagreement with a lot of the hype that goes around them is it really hardy if you have to wrap lights around it and put five layers of cloth on it? I don't think so. This is what they look like with the lights and with partial cloth on it. That's what's negative six. Zone six technically goes all the way down to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So it could have been colder. There are claims that you can grow stable miners in zone six. Sure, you can, but you got to protect them. There should be like an asterisk. Yes, zone six. With, a, with an asterisk. Same thing with the little gem. Sure, you can grow it, but you're going to have to really take care of them on those rare occasions that it gets really, really cold. That's probably partially also because of the YouTube channel. I don't like to tell people, yeah, this is going to be good in zone six when maybe every few years there might be a cold that's bad enough to kill it back. It takes a long time to say, hey, look at this plant, grow this plant in your zone five garden and then explain. But Every so often, you may have to wrap it up in light, throw anti-transpirant on it, let that dry, and then wrap it up in cloth, and then maybe put some styrofoam cubes around it and tape that up, and maybe some burlap and whatever else you need, some heat cables, throw in a thermo cube to control the temperatures. Yeah, that, no, that's not hardy. Okay, rant over. Yeah, zone six, you can grow most of the sable miners. The McCurtain, super sturdy variety for zone six. I mentioned in the last video, I don't know what variety, not variety, but what form these are form being the parent plant of the, like the area that the plant originated from. No idea, they're just sable miners. Not looking too hot, but they'll be okay. And like I said in the last video, these two that I'm growing over here, or there's actually four over here, they're pretty quick growers for sable miners. So uh, while this is unfortunate, with enough TLC, make sure to get a fungicide down to the crowns of those, help prevent rot and keep them really well fertilized, keep the soil nicely amended during the growing season and they should be looking good by the end of the growing season next year. I just, I don't like to have those setbacks. That's why I don't put the windmill palms out here. They, they don't grow fast enough and they cost way too much money. I had too many random experiences with freezes and storms coming through, ice storms more than anything. Those do a lot more damage than snowstorms with the windmill palms that just devastated them. It's not worth it. And that's why I keep them in pots and the needle palms, the big ones, of course they're fine. Needle palms and they were double bagged 
their bags never came off. They're pretty solid. There's another sable palm over here that looks pretty good. The warmer spot over here, and I had the lights more wrapped up in there. This spot's very protected. So I'm not surprised that everything over here is looking nice, looking good. Also with the palms, cold damage can take several weeks. Actually, it usually takes several weeks to show itself. So that's why I said I would imagine total defoliation on these, even though you see some green on both of these sable miners here. It doesn't mean that they actually did okay. My gauge for how well they did is really going to be about the center of the plant because that's where things really go wrong very, very quickly if that rots out. That's what I pay the most attention to. But if the leaves are all dried up like these are and they've lost their gloss to them, they're probably going to die off within several weeks. Maybe not. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. They don't look good. So if they want to die off, that's fine. Looking ugly. Don't need it in my garden anyway. So it's looking like that. I'd rather it just defoliate and then put up some new fronds. But as long as they're green and uh, have some sheen to them, like they're not all dried up and crusty, then I'll leave them on the planks. There's chlorophyll in there. That's energy for the plant. It'll keep growing as long as there's some green on there. Uh, excuse me. I was going to sit there. Do you mind? Had this love seat for two weeks. I never sit on it. There's always an animal on it. Hence why there's also a quilt on top of it. The dogs and the black fabric. That was a bad idea. Or navy fabric is what it was marketed as. I don't know. This is a teal quilt. Doesn't go with anything. I'm well aware that it's protecting the new love seat from the animals. Kind of. It'll do for now. Still working in this room. I'm about to move an outlet. Well, I'm going to expand an outlet or extend this outlet up there to that metal shelf because I have lights and things I want to be able to plug in up there. That's why this is pulled back. The plants in here looking okay. <laughs> it looked better. I tried keeping those ferns on my desk like I had mentioned in the bird's nest fern video a few weeks ago, but it just, it wasn't working. The cat was just eating them, just totally destroying them. So I moved them over here to the shelves. Spathophyllum's looking pretty good. The yellow leaf need to cut out of there, but its flowers are opening up. Seems happy, self-watering container. Way to go with those. You like the orchid? Isn't it just beautiful? Yeah, I know it's plastic. It's a Lego set. It was a Christmas gift and it was not fun to put together, but it looks really neat and I love it. And it doesn't need to be watered. So that's nice. Nice, shiny, plastic, Lego-y orchid. I thought he was gonna get up. He's not. Well, I got some curtains. I didn't have a curtain rod, so I just cut some bamboo from the backyard and Put that up there. It works for now. I know it doesn't look good, but it's creative. Don't hate. Just wanted them up there because in the afternoon, the sun comes through the corner, even with the blinds closed, it was coming through and just blinding me when I was sitting over here at the desk. I just, I had to get them up there. I'll get a curtain rod. Event, I mean, maybe this works, so I'm fine with it. Okay, not really. I'll at least paint them. This is where that tank's going to go. I'm going to have to move that. I mostly just put that up there as a joke anyways, but that's where the tank is going to go. That's, I know nobody cares, but I just felt like I needed to wrap that up since I brought it up. And you'll probably eventually be seeing a tank in here when I do other things as I've been working on the room. So that's, there's that. There's the update. As I'm standing here, I'm realizing I'm going to have to be very careful about where that tank goes because this door is going to swing out. And that's a three foot tank. So that's going to have to go further down the wall than I expected. It's not going to be able to be centered which will drive me crazy. This is the only wall it can go on though, so it has to be here and over. I could maybe faux center it, right? Does that make, does it, um, how do I explain that? I don't think that that's a thing. It's just a word that came out of my mouth while I was thinking of a thing. Put the tank where it needs to go and then uh, do something along the side of the wall to the side to separate it out from the door so it looks like it's been framed in by something and then it won't bother me that it's not centered. Does that make sense? It does in my head, don't worry about it. Almost to a point where you start picking out some office plants. Not quite though. Still have to do the molding and the stuff on the floor and I guess I'll get a real curtain rod. Need a picture frame for that print over there and then gotta get the electrical up over there. I don't know, I guess I could get, the, it's not hard to move a plant. I think it would be nice to have a kentia palm in here to put a little kentia over here in the corner with the, wouldn't, I, wouldn't that look so nice? Maybe over here, but I think, I don't know. I'm pretty sure this lamp is owned in this corner. I don't think there's room for a kentia palm over there. And lighting wise, you know, these low light plants, they're doing okay over here. A kentia palm, they can take low light, but it would be better and happier over here, like along the corner of the desk, that lamp, so, <laughs> this lamp probably not staying there. Somewhere over there, that would probably look nice. I never gave y'all the update on these lights. That's the, one of the reasons I'm running power up here so I can get those plugged in and 
That's correct. Do you guys have a good Christmas? This was a Christmas present. Do you have a good Christmas? I have a power brick here. I can probably plug these in with this. Well, I know that I can. I just don't know if I have enough of a charge. Let's see. Huh? Look at that. Now just imagine with all, all the clutter in front of it. I've just been setting stuff down over here. These shelves are not arranged. You can do the different light patterns. Isn't that fun? Look at that one. I like that one. That looks neat. And this is a dodeca, dode, dodecahedron. I think maybe that's how you say it. This right here. Isn't that cool? Family knows me well. Just give me things with lights. Things that are colorful with lights in them. That's the way to my heart. Things fun. Changes colors. You can do different things with it. I'm not going to do that right now. In fact, I'm draining the battery down on this as it is. But that's one of the reasons I want to get power up here. And I was thinking about putting puck lights or something over here to add accent lighting. I know. Nobody asked. This is just the part of the video where I ramble because it's time to go. Yeah, I hope everybody did have a good holiday. Nice Christmas, or whatever it is you celebrate. Happy New Year. 2022 was decent. Definite improvement over 2021 and a huge improvement over 2020. So I'll take it. Have any resolutions? Oh, I got a PS5 too. Was not expecting that. And I've had the realization that I'm a grown ass man and I don't have a lot of time to play video games. But on the rare occasion that I do, it's been fun. And an adjustable kettlebell, which I, I think I like. So far, seems pretty good. The shape is a little bit different. If you've ever done kettlebell workouts, it's a little bit awkward to work with, but it's good workouts. That's all I, that's all that matters. Let me see, I hope everybody's doing well. You're having a great day and a great life. You're just going beautifully for you. What's wrong with you? Why well, are you looking all scruffy? Such a sweetheart. Glad I bought a new love suit for you. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.